Hello everyone, my name is Jamie and today we are going to be reading a book called I Am Loved. This book is about a young boy's journey in foster care. He is trying to understand all his big feelings and questions and he has a lot of them. If you have your own copy, go get it now so we can read together. Are you ready? Okay, let's get started. I Am Loved Written by Jamie Cabe, illustrated by Leslie Ann. Chapter One, Separated. I never knew what a foster kid was until I became one. My mom and dad have always struggled a lot, but on one really bad day, everything changed. A police officer and a nice lady knocked on our door and told me and my little brother and sister that we needed to go with them. They said my mom and dad made some choices that were not safe for us. That's when we first went into foster care. I was scared, but I had to stay strong for my brother and sister. Everything seemed to be spinning around me and it all happened so fast that I didn't have time to grab anything, not even my football. When I think back to that day, I sometimes wonder if it was my fault that we had to leave. I have lots of feelings when I think about that day and when I think about mom and dad. Sometimes I worry about them, other times I'm mad at them for this entire mess, but mostly I just miss them. I get to see them once a week at the agency office, but the time goes by so fast. It's not like it used to be. Like when we would watch TV or walk to the park to play. I remember one time when I made my mom laugh so hard, she felt right out of her chair. I like to think about those times. I don't always like how I feel after my visits with my parents. Somehow it makes all my feelings grow bigger and get tangled up like a messy web. It hurts deep down, kind of like a stomach ache. Mom and dad never miss our visits and they are even going to classes to help them make better choices. I know it's not easy for them either. My parents and I are not together right now, but we are still family. Chapter two, worry. You know how I said I had to leave my parents? Well, it ended up that I had to leave my brother and sister too. They are still together, which I'm really glad about, but I was too old or something like that. So instead I moved in with grandma and they went to another home. That didn't make sense to me. Why couldn't we all go to the same place? But the more I think about it, I guess it would be hard for Grandma to take care of all three of us. And the family they are staying with didn't have room for me. I worry about my brother and sister. Is anyone tucking them in at night? Do they have food to eat? Are they okay? Questions run through my head all the time, probably because I'm the oldest. I might be the one who worries about them most. I took care of them a lot when we still lived with mom and dad. When I see my brother and sister on our visit days, I feel a little better. My worries get smaller because they seem happy. But then days and nights come and go and I can get so mad that we're not together. I hate it. Sometimes all of my feelings kind of collide. At least that's the word my therapist uses. It means come together at the same time and boom, I explode. One time I was really mad, so mad I kicked the wall and put a hole in it. Later I felt bad. That kind of stuff happens to me a lot. Sometimes my feelings explode after my visits with my parents or when I'm trying to do homework and I can't figure out the answer or when plans change fast. Sometimes I'm not even sure what I'm feeling. My therapist said to think about my feelings like a firecracker. Yeah, I didn't get it at first either. This is how she explained it to me. So first, something hard happens and it's like the fuse on a firecracker lights up. Then I can't figure out my homework assignment and the fire moves up the fuse. Then someone bugs me and it moves up again. So one thing leads to another and boom, I explode. My therapist is helping me understand my feelings so I can make good choices, even when it's hard. And it is hard. But my therapist said all my feelings are okay. It's okay to feel mad, 
sad, scared, confused, happy, or even just normal. Sometimes I feel all these things at the same time. Things are calmer than they used to be, and I like that. Is that bad? It kind of feels wrong. I know my therapist says whatever I'm feeling is okay, but it's hard for me to believe this because I feel guilty about being happy. Then I start to think again, is it my fault that we're in foster care? Is it my fault that my family isn't together? My therapist reminds me all the time that it's not my fault. She says my parents made some unsafe choices and they need to get healthy so we can be safe and together again. I want to believe her, but those guilty feelings like to creep in. I love my brother and sister so much, it hurts. How can love make you hurt? I know they love me too, that helps a little. Chapter three, normal. Like I said, I was living with my grandma. She hadn't been feeling very good, so when she got really sick, I had to move to a new foster home. She cried when I left her house, but I didn't know why. To be honest, I was kind of excited and jumped into the car. I didn't know I wouldn't be coming back. I wouldn't have been so excited if I had known. I think about grandma a lot. I hope she doesn't think I wanted to leave her. I hope she isn't sad anymore. The good news is I still get to see my grandma and even some of my aunts and uncles. Every once in a while, my foster family brings me to the park so I can spend time with them. We have a lot of fun together. When my favorite uncle sees me, he messes up my hair like he always did. I don't know why he does that, but I kind of like it because it feels like things are normal. He almost always brings his football, and as soon as I get there, he yells in his loudest voice, Go long! I run as fast as I can, and I catch that ball. Well, most of the time I catch it. Football is my favorite. My aunt usually asks me to tell her a joke, and so, of course, I come up with my best one. Then she laughs at me, not like she thinks I'm weird, but like she thinks I'm funny. You know, funny, funny. When I'm with my grandma and other people in my family, it makes things seem more normal. And even though things aren't normal right now, my family loves me and I love them. Chapter four, kindness. I have an awesome social worker. At first, I wasn't sure what social worker meant, but she's the one who makes sure everything is going okay for me. The police officer and the nice lady who first knocked on my door introduced me to her. She seems to understand me in a way others don't. She smiles a lot and has kind eyes. Sometimes when she picks me up, she looks tired. But as soon as I tell her my latest joke, she throws her head back and laughs really hard. She tells me I'm one cool kid. And every once in a while when she smiles at me, her eyes get little pools of water on the edges almost like she's going to cry. Weird, right? I think she helps a lot of kids like me, but when we're together, she makes me feel like I'm the only one that matters. She isn't my family, but it kind of feels like she is. Chapter five, relief. Remember I said before how those it's your fault feelings creep into my mind? I was really worried about this, especially when my social worker said I had to go to court. The courthouse was huge and we had to walk through metal detectors just to get to the elevators. But then I met the judge and he smiled at me right away. He seemed nice, so I let out a long sigh. I didn't realize until then that I had been holding my breath. My social worker told me that the judge's job is to make decisions that will be best for me and my brother and sister. She also said my parents will have to prove to the judge that they are doing what they need to do so we can all live together again. I hope my parents listen to him. I know they are trying hard. I really want us all to be together again. There was also a police officer in the courtroom. In our family, the police aren't usually the good guys, but this officer, well, he seemed okay. He had a wide grin and huge muscles and he came over to me and said, hey bud, then he reached his hand out. I didn't want to be rude, so I shook his hand and gave him my strongest squeeze. He acted like it hurt him, 
but I don't think it really did. He asked me how things were going and he listened like he really cared. The judge asked me how school was going. When I went into foster care, I had to start at a new school, so it was pretty rough at first. I didn't know anyone and I was afraid no one would like me. I miss my friends at my old school, but most of the kids here are okay. Plus, my teacher is really cool. He used to play football in college and he loves to tell jokes too. Sometimes we try out our latest jokes on each other. He never says gushy words like I love you or anything, but he does tell me I'm special and that good things are ahead for me. I hope he's right. I'm learning that new doesn't mean bad, it's just different. For me, new has even brought some good. Chapter 6, Belonging Remember I was excited when I left my grandma's house? That didn't last long. When I first met my foster family, I wasn't sure about them. Everything was different. They were strangers and I had to live with them. There were different smells and sounds at their house. It was kind of scary. But now I know them pretty well and I like them. My foster parents helped me with my homework and other stuff. The cool thing is they have other kids who have been nice to me too. The kids call me their brother, which at first felt really weird, but I don't know. I kind of like it now. It's nice to feel like I belong. Sometimes I feel bad about this, feeling like I belong here. Does this mean I don't love mom and dad anymore? Is it okay to love both families? It's so confusing. My therapist says love grows. It doesn't have to be split up. So even though my family is split up right now, our love doesn't have to be. I keep trying to remember this. Another thing my foster parents do is pray with me every night. They even pray for good things to happen for my mom and dad, and I think they really mean it because they never say anything bad about them. They even take them out to dinner every once in a while. When I'm mad or sad or when my feelings are jumbled up, my foster parents always seem to be here for me. My foster mom will sit down with me and wrap her arm around me, or my foster dad will take me outside to play football. Sometimes when we're playing, boom, I explode. I don't always know why, but the one good thing that happens is I can throw that ball really far. My fuse lights up a lot after my visits with mom and dad. Throwing the football far helps me get my feelings out. At least that's what my therapist says. My foster parents are pretty cool, actually. They tell me they love me and that I'll always be a special part of their family. Chapter 7, Hope. Another new experience I've had since coming to live with my foster family is going to church. I wasn't sure what to expect, but when I walked into church, I saw people with smiles in their eyes. I don't know how else to describe it. They just seemed happy. A bunch of people said welcome as we walked in. I didn't know what to say, so I just kept my head down. My foster dad walked next to me with his arm around my shoulder. He took me into a classroom with other kids my age. The kids looked at me a little strange at first, but they seemed nice enough. And boy, do they like to sing at this church. I didn't know one song, not one. I'd never, ever heard them before, but now I can sing along. My favorite songs are the ones with hand motions. At church, they talk about how everyone can be in God's family. I'm learning about a man called Jesus. He talked about loving others and helping people when they're hurting. I want to know more about him. Chapter 8, Loved. I was scared when I first came into foster care. To be honest, sometimes I still feel scared and mad and sometimes sad, but it's not all terrible. I still don't know how all of this will turn out. I don't know how long I will stay with my foster family. I don't know if I will get to go home. There are a lot of things I don't know and that's hard, really hard. It's hard to wait and see what will happen. It's hard to wait for answers. Foster care has brought a lot of hard things into my life, but there are some good things too. I have more people in my life now who really care about me and my family than I did before. 
and I care about them too because love grows. I am loved. The end. I love that book. Thank you so much for reading along with me. I hope you enjoyed the story too. And if you want to know more about the Who Love series or buy the books, you can head over to wholoveseries.org. I hope you have a wonderful day.